Hello. In this video, I want to discuss some of the theoretical aspects involved in differentiation of vector functions. Now, how do we define what we mean by the derivative of a vector function? <coughs> well, the definition is very similar to, the to that for the derivative of a scalar function. Right, so let's say we have a vector function r, and well, let's say it's a three-dimensional vector function. The definition for two-dimensional vector functions is entirely similar. And this vector function is defined on an open interval containing the real number a. We say that r is differentiable at a if there is some vector r prime at a such that the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h r of a plus h minus r of a is equal to r prime at a. And this r prime a here we call the derivative. Right. Now, you'll notice that this is very similar to the definition for, of the derivative of a scalar function. Right. If we look at this limit here. Let's say if you recall that if you have a function from r to r and a real number a, then you say that f at a if this limit exists. So limit h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Right. This limit must exist and then f is differentiable. And the value of that limit is the derivative. Right. So what we've got here is simply the vector version of this definition. Right? Now, one thing that we should note about this expression here that we're taking a limit of is the following. Right? So let's say r of t has components x of t, y of t, z of t. Right? Then, if we write, say, call it qh uh, let's just write it q of h as 1 over h r at a plus h minus r at a right. and now we look component y then this becomes x a plus h minus x at a over h we've got in the second component y of a plus h minus y of a over h and in the last component of course z a plus h minus z of a over h Right, we've got this vector function. So we can write this quotient as a single vector function of h. And then if we take the limit as h goes to 0 of this vector function q of h, right, now what do we do? Well, remember, the limit of the vector function is the component-wise limit. So we have to look at each of the components. Right? If we take this limit we have to look what happens in each of the components. Right? And you'll see that as h goes to 0, each of these components will go to the derivative of the component. So in other words, in particular, if we look at this one here, right, what's going to happen? That is going to tend to the derivative of z at a as h goes to 0. Right? And the same happens in the other components. Right? So we've got the following theorem. Right? And again, this is based on our result that relates the limit of a vector function to the limit of its components. Right? And it shows us how important that theorem is. So if we have a vector function, R, defined on an open interval containing A an element of R, and let's say this vector function R has components X, Y, and Z then 
R is differentiable at A if and only if each of the component functions, x, y, and z, are also differentiable at A. Right. And if R is differentiable at A, then its derivative is given by this. So in other words, to compute the derivative of a vector function, you have to differentiate each of the components. Yeah. Now, let's see how we use this result. Let's do a, a, a simple example. Okay, so here we've got a vector function r of t. Right, first component 2 to the t, second component cosine t squared plus 1, and the third component e to the t squared minus 1. Now, this vector function is differentiable on r. We want to find its derivative. Right? So, the derivative of r exists for every... Right? Why? Because the components are differentiable. Right? So, that means our vector function is differentiable. So, let's see. What are the components? x of t, the first component, is 2 to the t. Right? Therefore, its derivative is 2 to the t for every real number t. The second component, y of t, is equal to cosine t squared plus 1. Here will be minus 2t sine t squared plus 1, again, for every real number t. And the last component, z of t, is e to the t squared minus 1. So again, using the chain rule, the derivative of z is 2t e to the t squared. So, using our theorem, we see that the derivative of the vector function r at any t is then 2, 2 to the t, minus 2t sine t squared plus 1, 2t e to the t squared, or t an element of r. Okay, so... The moral of the story here is that to differentiate a vector function, we must first check are the components differentiable, and if so, then the vector function itself is, is differentiable, and we simply differentiate component-wise. Right? So in each component, we take the derivative.